Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Today, we celebrate the Epiphany of the Lord because it says in the Missal, in the dioceses of the United States, as the Sunday between January 2nd and January 8th, or something, because it's not exactly a full week, but in there, today, that being the, day, the Epiphany, is also like, I think, the ninth day of Christmas. That being said, with like the 12 days of Christmas, there are, there, there's a little bit of a, of a funny thing. So you get like the eighth day, which gets you to, to, to January 1st. But then the numbering gets a little bit off. If you want the 12th day to be Epiphany, that's the sixth, you have to add a day. So it's like just kind of an extra little blah, 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 blah. Or if Epiphany is okay being the 13th day, as in the day after the 12 days of Christmas, then you can just be fine with that too. Or it just feels a little bit funny to have it on the ninth day, though. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. We need a couple other days here to kind of get over the new year. But that's just me. <laughs> Don't mind me. As we always do, we pray every day. And every day, it's a beautiful mystery that we pray with. Let's begin with our prayer. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be granted the glory of his resurrection. For the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Sorry I was a little bit late, just coming over from the other mass. Um, here we are. It's a very cold day here in Park City. Very cold. We're staying warm. Let's get to it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. 
All nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. And they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Epiphany is one of the major feasts of the church year. Major feasts like Christmas, Easter, Epiphany. It doesn't always feel like it, though. It certainly doesn't to me right now, because what I'm thinking right now is I'd rather just go back to bed after the new year. And Christmas is still very much present in my mind. It's still very much the afterglow. And it's way too close. But no, today's the Epiphany and we will talk about it. And if you want to celebrate the Epiphany on the 6th, like a normal person, please go ahead and do so. Well, one of those things where it's like, why not celebrate it several times? It's a big feast. It's one of the major ones. And also, enjoy it. If anything, let's be prepared well for it. So, Epiphany has lots of very interesting themes. The word means, of course, the manifestation. What is being manifested? Well, a bunch of things. So the Lord is manifested in a variety of different ways. Here are some examples of epiphanies of Jesus. Angels and shepherds. Angels say to shepherds, ba 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 ba. And then the shepherds go and actually see him. Okay, that's one kind of one epiphany complex right there. Then we have, of course, the Magi that we're talking about today in a special way. We also have the baptism of the Lord when the 
voice from heaven comes, behold my son in whom my favor rests, listen to him. Also, the spirit appears as a dove, and so on. That's kind of for next week when we celebrate the baptism of the Lord, though. Then also, the beginning of our Lord's public ministry in the marriage of Cana, and the miracle there that is manifesting the Lord, where the Lord goes from, my time has not yet come, to Mary saying, do whatever he tells you, and the miracle occurs, and so on. Those are just like the initial epiphanies. Then we have, of course, gospels that are filled of the miracles of Jesus, and the marvelous words that he spoke in a variety of different occasions and ways, and of course, the other things, to say nothing of the resurrection, which was kind of a big event, and so on, epiphanies, or a very big epiphany, Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes in a very visible way to the church and manifests not just with some tongues of fire, but in the preaching of the gospel and in the existence of the church. And that's a very interesting kind of epiphany too. So there are a couple things going on with epiphany, which really permeate the whole idea of what the church is. So for that reason, Epiphany Day is when there's this funny little thing called the Noveritas. It's when the movable feasts are announced. And if you want to go onto YouTube, you can probably find me doing this at the Vatican once upon a time and having a great deal of fun with it. But just for fun, because it's coffee and we're among friends here, here's what it looks like today in English for this coming year. No, dear brothers and sisters, that as we have rejoiced at the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, so by leave of God's mercy, we announce to you also the joy of his resurrection, who is our Savior. On the second day of March will fall Ash Wednesday, and the beginning of the fast of the most sacred Lenten season. On the 17th day of April, you will celebrate with joy Easter Day, the Paschal Feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the 29th day of May will be the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the fifth day of June, the Feast of Pentecost. On the 19th day of June, the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. On the 27th day of November, the first Sunday of the Advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And it's way too early to start thinking about November next year and the first Sunday of the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's way too early, but it is coming. You see, that's one of those themes about, about Epiphany. There are a lot of things that we're like, we're not ready for this. And, and we can be kind of cute about it because it's like, no, we are just, it's the second day of the year. We just did New Year's. We're not talking about November. Well, this is also one of those big moments of epiphany that happens with Christ. Note that it's Christ being manifested to whom, to us, the big epiphany of our lives is when we will see him face to face, our death. All right, now I'm not trying to be ultra heavy with that, but at many times we think like, oh no, November is way too far away. I'm not ready to think about that. And that's fine, that's realistic. But at the same time, what we're really preparing for through like all of these things, what we really have in mind, like in a very sincere and real way, is that our Lord is always being manifested to us in a variety of different ways, through the sacraments, through the existence of the church as a people together and the celebrations that we do, all of us together. In fact, this is what I was preaching about this morning that just as the Magi follow the star, so do we follow the star of Christ, often in most very easy way throughout the year and the mysteries of Christ, which are celebrated in the liturgical calendar. But it's not just that. We actually do find him. We find him constantly. And that manifestation of Christ, what is it? We haven't quite answered the question. It's his divinity that he is born. So 
in the Roman canon, there's a special thing just for today, just a little one little phrase that happens just today. And here's what it says. And again, like, and this is like, here's what the epiphany is. So this is that part celebrating on the most celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten son eternal with you in your glory appeared in a human body truly sharing our flesh and in community with those who memory venerate well that that thing of epiphany is clearly christmas the divinity of christ a human body the divinity who is god that is our humanity coming together well this is what we've been talking about all through Christmas, but this is that special theme that I've also said, like, there's never enough time to really talk about it, because epiphany kind of hits you like a punch in the face. <laughs> and here we are already, it's like, uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, no, that's what's really being manifested. And not just that. So the epiphany that we are waiting for in our lives is hopefully not one that we've just been waiting for and haven't been looking the Lord is always manifesting himself. There's always an epiphany. But still, coming to the point of like why this is important, here is what the, like the solemn blessing at the end of Mass has to say. Again, is talking about what is actually being manifested. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Great. The darkness of sin to the light of Christ. That's an epiphany, not just like that one time, but always and constantly living in that light, part of the epiphany that is ongoing. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. That's a very big epiphany too. As we follow Christ and you know the mysteries of Christ throughout the year, well, all of that's very well and good, but it's part of the thing of actual charity that we must really do. And this is also part of what I was saying this morning in my homily. The kings, the magi, were themselves magi before they got to that point of seeing Christ. Well, what did that even mean? They, they had a certain way of being. As they were following the star, they also were being themselves. They were manifesting themselves talk about manifestations everywhere, but they were acting as themselves that had certain consequences. That they were following the star was probably a very kind of normal part of their lives in a sense, that it was to be expected, and that they were givers of gifts also, likewise. Well, for those of us who follow the star who is Christ, in a very real, sincere way, that action of Christian must manifest constantly, even if that presence of Christ isn't entirely fulfilled. We live in a time in our lives of a sacramental presence of Christ, of a presence that is manifested, that is manifested through the various mysteries of Christ, but is not yet fulfilled. It doesn't make us like somehow less of a Christian, as if it made the Magi less of Magi or something. No. But how they behave, how they act, the consequence of their being, their character being shown, is particularly important, just as our character also is important. And that that way in which it manifests does actually change over time. It's not the same. It's not always going to be the same actions day, tomorrow, and the rest, just as the mysteries of Christ that we celebrate throughout the year are not exactly the same they change. Think of the way in which we manifest actual charity. A person is in need right in front of us. Is it the same person as yesterday? No, not really. Is it a different circumstance? Probably. Is a different kind of help ne needed? Almost certainly. It's unique and special. Likewise, the rest of this Christian experience. Epiphany is kind of a big feast day, and it has a lot to do with us. And finally, the last of these prayers is the solemn blessing. And so when our, your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Again, not just because like in you know, the judgment, there's Christ. No, we follow the star 
that star is Christ. We can also call the star the faith. We can also call the star the church in the, in the sense of the church and the faith, not necessarily the church as the people of the church. The people and the thing hopefully are going in the same kind of direction at the same time in the same way. Again, that's another part of this idea of accompaniment for Christ and the manifestation of the light who he is. As Christ is our leader and we are his followers, there's not a distance between them. It's not leading from afar. That's the difference with the Magi now. It's not a sky, uh, so a star in the sky, a star in the heavens, very distant and very difficult to see, but rather Christ is with his people constantly. And even there, there's manifestation. For example, the time of the transfiguration, which is definitely also another big old manifestation of Christ's divinity, but it's the same Christ who is with his followers all the time. And those followers who were with him at the time of the transfiguration, they saw a different part of him. They saw the divinity of him. Anyway, the mystery of the epiphany is a really big and beautiful one. And it's nice to be able to kind of sketch out these various different points. There are more. These are just the highlights. <laughs> when it comes to Lord manifesting himself, he does it a lot. Think about the word. <laughs> when it comes to like the word became flesh and dwelt among us, which of course we read as words on a page, divine revelation, that is say sacred scripture, the Bible, is one of those ways in which God is manifested and all the other consequences from that, we can really go on and on. And of course, you know me, I'm also about those kinds of natural manifestations that happen too. This whole manifestation idea of epiphany begins with a star. Yes, those things are important too. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox apparently, that's what I'm doing right now. The epiphany of the Lord is one of these beautiful feasts which encompasses the whole mystery of what our faith is. Christmas ends up never quite being kind of heavy enough and big enough and real enough and full enough because we always have like the other things going on at Christmas. Easter is also, it's like, there's a lot going on obviously, but we never really have enough time. Epiphany is we're too tired to, but still regardless of when we do Epiphany, which is today and also later, but this is certainly an Epiphany tide. Use that if you want to, enjoy it. Meditate on what is being manifested in Christ, his divinity, a divinity that through our humanity we have access to. This is the mystery of the nativity. Anyway, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father and Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar and for all bishops, that the childlike faith that God desires will always be in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn, that whether planned or not, they will be welcomed into this world with love, joy, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she be welcoming and supportive to all, especially to those who feel they have no place to turn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, that those with chronic illnesses will not lose hope for a cure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, the Fagots ask us to pray for them, um, that they sell their home in Heber for multiple surgeries upcoming and recovery from those surgeries, but as well as health problems. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and the Church. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. All right, everyone have a lovely Sunday. Stay warm. All right, God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.